What's up? So since my last YouTube upload, I uh, I hit a thousand subscribers. Just a little over that now, I think. But that's pretty cool. So I just want to say before I started this video, thank you to everybody that's subscribed to the channel so far and makes this seem a little worth it once you start seeing results. I know it's only a thousand subscribers, but still. I think my goal is to get to a thousand by the beginning of the summer, but that didn't happen. But that is also my own fault because I stopped making videos for three months. So um, anyway, thanks for those of you that have subscribed so far. Those that have written comments, sent me DMs on Instagram and you know, just showed me a lot of encouragement to keep going and making these videos. So I appreciate you. Street photography can be an unforgiving pursuit. The constant need to adapt to a variety of variables that are mostly outside of your control. Despite this, it can also be one of the most rewarding pursuits. There are days you walk away with a couple decent images, and then there are days you walk away with none at all. Whether for reasons outside of your control or within it. It's easy to share your good work and much harder to share your mediocre or outright bad work. Now, obviously, it makes sense to only show your good or best work, especially when building out your portfolio to showcase your skills and to find potential clients or sell it. But the problem with only showing the great stuff, I think, can set unrealistic expectations on some aspiring artists, although self-imposed. So I thought I'd show my most recent day out in New York as an example of what a realistic day of street photography can look like. I'm gonna start with uh, a few photos that I actually did quite like. This was actually one of the first photos I took of the day. And I think, I think it's just a great example of all the things coming together. What's happening in the frame is provoking. I was in the right place at the right time was able to avoid disturbing the scene and I didn't blow it on what I can control, which is how I'm shooting. In contrast, I took this photo seconds before I took that first photo I showed you. And what could have been an otherwise pretty good image, I kind of dropped the ball on because of things within my control, which were camera settings, um, less so settings and more just how I was handling my camera. The uh, I was shooting on the X106 and I'm still not quite used to how much slower the autofocus is on that camera as opposed to my Sony. And so I get a little, I don't even know what you would call it, like whiplashy with the camera when I'm out there because the Sony I could just whip around. It would snag onto the target, boom, never had to worry about it. But with this, I definitely, I've been trying to be more conscious about slowing down, allowing the camera to have time to focus on the subject uh, if I am using autofocus. And yeah, so that's just one of those examples of could have been a good photo, missed it because of things that were within my control, not outside of it. Another photo I liked from the day was this subway shot that I got. I weirdly almost didn't take this photo, but I'm glad I did because I, I just love the layers throughout it. Uh, the balloon makes it feel playful. Uh, the colors as well, the girl with the sunglasses, the guy to the right standing kind of rigidly and stoically almost, the kids sort of hiding amongst the randomness of the scene, and even the people on their phones. It's just, it's so random, yet looks as if it could have been posed. And I think that's what I, I like about this photo is it's almost surreal in a way. Now, I don't want to just review photos in this, so 
I'm going to show two more photos that I actually did like from the day, and then we'll move on to the bad stuff. As great as it is to have come away with these photos, they were a small fraction of the photos I took that day. I actually didn't take close to what I would normally take in a day uh, on this day for some reason, so don't have a lot of examples, but the ratio of good to bad is still, you know, more bad than good. Whether it was poor composition, not giving the camera time to focus, hesitancy, or a lack of interest in the frame. We all take bad photos. And you know what? That's okay. If anything, it makes it better. To walk out your door and to know everything you shoot that day is going to be a masterpiece, would not only be boring, but would take away from the value. Imagine not having a great day of shooting and culling through the photos from that day to be surprised by just one good photo. That one good photo becomes the motivation to get out and shoot again. Just as only taking portfolio-worthy images would be boring, only taking bad ones would be deterring. But you need to take a bunch of terrible photos first and at some point, you'll find the one that starts the itch no amount of scratching will relieve. Allow yourself to be bad at something, otherwise you won't end up close to good at it. I believe my YouTube channel, for example, has been a great way of overcoming that. Um, I'm no master videographer and the videos I'm making aren't these crazy pieces of work, um, but the more I make myself do it, the more I learn, hopefully with time, of making bad things or mediocre things, I end up better at doing these things. Same with photography. The hard part about all of this, though, is just getting out of your own way. Almost every single video I've made on this channel so far is just me trying to get over myself. Like accepting what I'm gonna make is gonna be, it might be fine, right? But it's not gonna be some masterpiece. I'm also not really aspiring to make some sort of cinematic masterpiece with these videos. They're just kind of casual chit chats, reminiscing days of shooting, talking about things that are important to me. Uh, things I'm working through. I'm usually just questioning myself and what I'm creating throughout the entire process and just doing it anyway. Much like photography, you need to put in the reps before you create something great. Look at the photos you've taken, good and bad. Appreciate the small number of usable ones and sit with the bad ones. Ask yourself, what did I do wrong here? What could I have done instead? Use the plethora of bad photos you'll take and learn from them instead of seeing them as a reason to quit. I'm by no means an award-worthy photographer, an amazing videographer. I'm just creating what I wanna make for my own sake and in turn to let others know they aren't alone in their struggles. It's easy to throw a highlight reel online and show off, but I'm looking to share more than the wins. This video seemed a little all over the place, so if you made it this far, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this, and go make something bad. <laughs>